industry term that has been around for a few years. And at Bentley, we have evolved and advanced BIM capabilities. So when we talk about BIM advancements, we're typically talking about it across the life cycle, going from design through construction and operations, and then also within the life cycle, say within design, going from just not modeling how things look, but also things behave. So for us, we take BIM advancements around both these axes and we move it forward, whether it's tools for design, analysis, construction, and all the way to asset performance. Because at the end of the day, we believe that all of us are working at the behest of the owner. So the benefits ultimately accrue to the owner. So you have to start with the end in mind, so which is having better performing assets. So asset performance modeling is the ultimate value for BIM. And that's what we aspire to deliver with our software solutions. So it's very interesting that you say that because construction is really way behind in its adoption of technology. There's a report by McKinsey that says really the productivity gains in construction have averaged only 1% a year for the last 20 years. So we're really constructing the same way like we have for the last 80 years. So technology is so far advanced in the rest of our lives, but in construction it's still way behind. So there's a big opportunity. And there are many things that are happening in construction today that can help by the adoption of technology. So an example is uh, prefabrication. So earlier construction sites, you would do all the construction in the site. Now your construction in prefabricated modules off-site and you bring them to the construction site like Lego and you just connect the dots. So many, many infrastructure projects are now being completely revolutionized because of new capabilities and technology that allow you to be able to, for example, do these uh, fabricate off-site, assemble on-site as one example. And we're doing many things with technology. So we have Construct Sim for construction simulation to make sure you can do all of these types of models, construction models, to be able to uh, do your work phase planning because uh, there's almost 35% of time at the construction site is not actually doing the work but waiting for the right materials or for the right tools or sequencing all of that work. So when we are working with our solutions with a lot of these major owners we can help them save lots of time so increasing tool time reducing the bench time with our technology for construction. So we think closing the gap between the current productivity and even bringing it back to average productivity gains can add 1.6 trillion new dollars every year of, of being able to be more efficient with our spending in construction. It's interesting because when we look about uh, our solutions, it's not just about the technology, but it's also about the people. So we can have lots of new technology, but if people don't know how to use it effectively, it ends up not being uh, the most productive. So from our standpoint, as a company, we've always had a long-term relationship with our users. So earlier, uh, we would have a subscription program so that our job as a company was to be able to deliver the software more frequently through our select and ELS uh, subscription programs. And now we have taken that to the next level in engaging with our users on outcomes. And we have success plans. So we're almost telling them that if you're not successful, we're not successful. So we're not in the business of sending you the software and saying, okay, we're done, good luck. It's okay, how can we help you deliver the project successfully? So with user adoption and user success, our teams are almost sitting 
with the user, helping them deliver their projects. We know we are also learning as we do that. The other thing we're doing is inside our products, the new generation of people never read manuals. They want to be learning while they're using the products. So inside the product, we have this Connect Advisor. It's a ability to quickly search and then bring little YouTube videos to help them learn while they're doing their work and also connect electronically with experts. So you could be sitting in Barcelona doing a project and a bridge expert sitting in Romania or sitting in the UK or sitting in the US can interactively chat with you and help you do your project more effectively. So all of those things are where we're headed with this technology. So there's an explosion of sensors in our lives. In the next three years, it's going to triple to almost 20 billion sensors are going to be around. Now they'll be on our watches, on our fridges, in our buildings, and all of these sensors are creating all of this information. So your bridges are going to be telling you every minute what their health is. Like a human being from your watch is telling you how many steps you walk today. Your bridge will be telling you it's health every day. So you can go in and make a fix before it collapses. So taking information from all of these different devices, so we think there's a convergence. So for you to be able to converge and make sense of this information, you need the engineering models that were used to design the bridge. So let's say you designed the bridge and you were expecting a certain amount of displacement or movement or stress in a certain area, but the sensor is telling you something else. Are you supposed to go and make a fix? Are you supposed to make a change? Is it okay? How do you make those decisions? So you have to bring together the engineering models, you have to bring together the sensor data, and you have to bring together maybe the ERP data of what's now available to me, what do I have in my warehouse. So that convergence of all of these things, three things together is what the big data uh, will let us do. And so we think this allows you to bring us new insights into how you can be more effective. Because at the end of the day, if an owner can extend the life of that bridge or that building for another five or 10 years cost effectively for the same money, but make it last longer, that's better for all of us. So imagine your life today disconnected. So when you come in and you're working in your personal life, and every piece of information that you have is not connected to anything else, it's awful where you have to then make those links in your head and it takes time. So from a engineering and work standpoint, the magic is understanding that if I have any piece of engineering information, maybe it's a light bulb, a sprinkler, a pump, a transformer, we know all that information from the day that the architect or the engineer decided to use one in the building to when it was bought, how many times it's been changed and what its current status is, how much time is left on the warranty. Connecting that component for a whole life cycle gives you so much more effectiveness to be able to use it in your day-to-day -day life. So, a connected data environment for infrastructure is an absolute key to all of the BIM advancements we talk about. So from our standpoint, that connected data environment is built on a cloud platform. It leverages project-wise for the design workflows and asset-wise for the operational workflows. And its goal is to take information right from design conceptually all the way to the end of life of those information assets and connect that data as it gets created and added over the life cycle. And then you can truly build insights and deliver insights. So from a civil engineering standpoint, there have been many projects that are helping move this technology forward. I'll give you a very specific example. There is one of the largest projects in the Northern Hemisphere called Crossrail. 
It was taking the subway system in London, connecting the east of London to the west of London, and it was almost a $20 billion project. And the goal for the team was to build the digital crossrail before they built the physical crossrail. So you're taking underground stations, underground utilities, underground train lines, under a city that's hundreds, if not thousands of years old. And when they're digging, they're finding all of these unexpected situations. So being able to use 3D technology, not just the models, but also all the specifications from the contract documents and the deliverable are two things. There's the physical crossrail and the delivering the digital crossrail that they will use to operate this for the next hundred years. So here's a great example. And the project today is on track and on budget because of their investment in this sort of technology. So it is possible and it is happening. So there's a lot of magic happening today in our industry because of the technology disruptions with the cloud, because of the technology disruptions with big data, because of the technology disruptions with mobile, and you bring all of this together with sensors and there's wonderful, uh, there's a phrase by Arthur C. Clarke that says, sufficiently advanced technology is like magic. And we have technology that can go out and capture existing reality by just taking photographs uh, and processing those photographs in the cloud with products called context capture. So you can go and take the whole city of Barcelona and within hours of data capture and a few days of processing, you can have a 3D city model of the entire city that you can then use and the whole public can use. So this reality modeling is some brand new innovation that's now doable because of the magic of cloud processing coupled with innovation, innovative new technologies that we can bring together that can really add lots of new value in the areas of advancing infrastructure. That's our Bentley solution.